T.G. Shepard is here. How in the world are you? Well, I'm doing good. I've been in the recording studio all day, Rowdy. How are you, you doing? I'm doing good. And um, <laughs> I interviewed T. Graham Brown a couple of hours ago. Yeah. And of course, the reason that we're chatting with you today is because uh, the both of you will be playing in my backyard at a place called Scotty Saloon in Richmond on April the 13th. And um, yeah, we're, we're looking I, forward to that. That's the uh, TNT show, the uh, T.G. Shepard and uh, T. Graham show. That'll, I hope everybody will come out and catch our shows. I think they will. And and I'll let you know that I fired a shot right over his bow right off the bat because I said, <laughs> you know, is it intimidating to you to share a stage with a guy that is still so good looking? Because <laughs> you really have preserved yourself in a Dick Clark-esque kind of way over the years. Well, you know, I'm married to Kelly Lang. Yes, so you are. That'll if, keep you young. If I don't stay, it, it, you know, at least relevant, she's going to trade me in on a newer model. And I don't want that to happen. No, so, no, no, no. No, I, I'm inspired by her. And uh, I don't know. I've, Rowdy, I've always kind of taken care of myself. I never have been a big drinker. I never have been a drugger of any kind. And uh, uh, I partied a little bit when I was younger, when I was first starting out in the 70s. But uh, I, I everybody pretty, did. Yeah, I've pretty much taken care of myself through the years. So I attribute a good, clean life to hopefully staying fairly youthful. Well, tell me about this album that you're working on with your wife. Who is a singer? I think we should point that out, and a very good one. Well, she uh, and I did a album together many years ago, a duet album called Iconic Duets, and it did so well through Time Life, you know, uh, the record label company. And um, so we decided, the fans for years have been saying to me, when are you and Kelly going back in to do another duet album? And so about a year and a half ago, a year and a half ago, we started tracking this album. And so we've taken our time to put it together at our own pace without any uh, invasion uh, from record labels or management. We did it ourselves. We, we own our own label. We uh, have our own management company. So we were in control of the project. So we went in the studio a year and a half ago and started this album. And just now finishing it up and hopefully it'll be out in the next two or three months. I was uh, on T. Graham Brown's website, kind of preparing things for the interview with him. And I did not know that he had done a lot of work in the jingle business. Oh and yeah. I know, that, I know that you did. And I wanted to get this straight because I have seen you on stage dozens of times yeah. and uh, you have most of the time taken the opportunity to, Sing the Folgers Coffee jingle. Yeah. But what I what I never did quite grasp, and I'll tell you that I've lied about this over the years if I was wrong about it. Did you sing that or did you write that or both? Both. Oh, okay. That, there were, there okay, were then several, I didn't lie. That makes me were, feel better. There were several writers on that because through the years it's gotten changed so many times. Sure, sure. Um, but basically my main uh, intro into it was that I had the Folgers NASCAR team, uh, NASCAR, the T.G. Shepard Folgers uh, coffee machines. Mm -hmm. And uh, they asked me to do the jingle in the early 80s. I was the first one to do the jingle. And then they asked me if I wanted to make a change or two here and there, I could. So I made a few changes of my own, which they wound up using. So uh, I, you might say both, but uh it was a great association to be able to be involved because anytime you hook a commercial that's that big, oh God, it you lives know. forever. <laughs> you know, even the gift they that keeps on giving, just go to the mailbox. I'm sure. <laughs> well, I, it, it's been it's been a good uh, a good check every few months for the last since the early '80s. But uh, you know, the best part of waking up is Folgers in your cup, and it's been good to me through racing and through touring. We did a waking up tour many years ago with Garth and the Judds and myself, and uh, it's it's been a great association with them through the years. Now, you mentioned subtle tweaks, and this was something that I was going to get to a little bit later on. You know, um, I was friends with Earl Thomas Conley. Oh. And I, I was actually one of the few radio people that I think he – didn't mind being around. 
uh, over the years. And uh, I, that's because we did a lot of tech talk. Right. And I remember him telling me that he and you in particular, I remember he brought you up in this, were kind of at that pivotal time in your careers when you really broke out where you had to keep in mind the AM country radio listeners, but you also had to keep in the back of your head that you were kind of producing, mixing, writing, recording for a whole new generation of listeners on the FM band. And I remember that ETC told me that he recalled literally sending a 45 back or, or having, having it reissued just for an FM audience, you know, right. send this version, this mix to AM stations, send this to FM stations. And I want to say that he told me that you had done that. too. I did. Oh, okay. I mean, I think, I think all of us in that era that came along at that time in our careers with our music did that, you know, we were, we were very fortunate to, I came along at a time Rowdy when music was going through a big change. It had come from the Charlie Pride, Farron Young's, uh, Marty Robbins type days. Uh, and then people like myself and the Oak Ridge Boys and the Gatlins and Kenny Rogers and all of us kind of came along in that urban cowboy uh, craze when it became really popular to wear hat and boots. Mm -hmm. When John Travolta put on the hat and the boots, it became cool. Mm -hmm. So we got we came along at a, a very exciting time in country music when it was going through some changes and it brought in a whole new audience because of Mickey Gilley and the Urban Cowboy Movement. Now, let me ask you this, and this is kind of along that same line and in that same era. You you mentioned the, 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 the little sweet spot that, that you guys kind of all fell into. Right. So Conway Twitty really hit his stride when he figured out that there were women that were warm for his form. He was uh, he was really a part of, uh, of of making that transition and right. and and bringing a whole new audience to country music with female listeners. You did that as well, and I had heard that there had been some conversations over the years, kind of like, "Hey, man, why are you?" fishing off of my dock, if you will. <laughs> and I often wondered, was he even remotely serious about that or or was he just kidding around? No, he was he was serious. I mean, because <laughs> I was I was opening up for Conway, Rowdy. I mean okay, okay. In the beginning, in the beginning, we all opened up for Conway, whether it was George Strait or myself or Kenny Rogers, we all opened up for Conway because he had a huge audience. Yeah, why wouldn't you want to? Right. And so when I had the chance to tour with him for several years, I went to school on the songs that he was recording and I kept watching his crowds and I kept watching the women in the audience at his shows standing in the wings after I went on. And I learned a lot about what type of songs to sing. And so I kind of picked up uh, on what he was doing because it was working so well for his career and it wound up working for me too. It, it worked great. Now you um, are from Tennessee, which is kind of a rare uh, commodity for country music singers. You didn't have to travel very far and you had a background in the business prior to getting in front of that microphone. But I wanted to kind of jump back to your days with Elvis because, you know, people used to always talk about, Oh, it's great. You know, to have an invitation to the playboy mansion, but I understand maybe having the uh, front door key to Graceland might have been a little bit cooler. And you, in fact, did. Well, I lived there at Graceland off and on for years mm -hmm. uh, with Elvis when I was a kid. And it, it was really and truly, you know, you never realize that you're living history until something ends. Mm -hmm. So when his life ended, not his career, because it still goes. But when his life ended, I realized that I was actually in the midst of living history by being around here for so many years. He was a wonderful, wonderful, warm, loving human being. He was a great guy with zero ego. And he really he gave me some advice one time. People ask me all the time, did Elvis ever give you any advice on how to do your career? 
And I remember one night late at Graceland, we're sitting in the jungle room and he turned to me and I had my second number one record at that time. And he turned to me and he said, can I give you a little bit of advice? Cause your career looks like it's going to sustain itself. You're going to take off. And I said, sure. I, what do you, tell me. And he said, listen close to what I'm telling you. I said, okay. He said, if you ever forget where you came from, you're never going to get where you want to go. Keep, wow. your ego, keep your ego in check because the fans who give you the magic and the, and the life that you live will take it from you just as quickly as they give it to you. And they should, if you aren't kind and accessible to them. So I kind of take, took that mantra and lived by it my whole career to always remember where I came from and that it was just singing and standing in the spotlight once a day does not make a person any better than the guy sitting in the audience in the dark. So I always really and truly took that to heart and I lived by it. And, uh, you know, knowing Elvis and being around him, he gave me my first tour bus. Uh -huh. uh, get me started, which was an, inc somebody else asked me one time, Rowdy, they said, was the bus the greatest gift that Elvis, Elvis ever gave you? And I said, no, he gave me a greater gift than that. Uh, the gift of the bus that he gave me, gave me the real gift. And that was the gift of confidence. To know that somebody as big as Elvis thought enough of me and believed in me enough to give me a tour bus made me work harder not to let him down because he believed in me. And it drove me to be better than I could possibly ever be because of that, that gift of the bus. So the gift of confidence was the greatest gift. Well, Elvis was famous for, for giving away oh, yeah. a whole lot of things, cars especially. <laughs> And, and yeah. that was the one thing I was thinking, you know, that that must have been a nice ego boost to you, because even if it was a pre-owned tour bus, it still cost a hell of a lot more than your average Coupe de Ville. Yeah, I mean, somebody one time said, did he ever give you a Cadillac? And I said, oh, he gave me several Cadillacs, yeah. but in the gift of one bus. Right, <laughs> so right, right. You could have well, several Cadillacs for that. You know, um, you and I kind of have a odd connection. I remind you of this every once in a while. Um, there was a disc jockey in Memphis when you were in Memphis by the name of Hal J. Oh, yeah. And Hal J uh, gave my family a wonderful gift in the early 80s and that he hired my father at WBAP Radio there in Fort Worth, where yeah. Hal still is today. Yeah. And uh, yeah. my father worked there as his morning news guy for, I don't know, 10, 15 years. And really, that was kind of like the pinnacle of his career, but uh, Hal uh, took his brand new bride, Anne, and I can only imagine the conversation that he must have had with Anne's parents to say, by the way, I'm dragging your daughter hundreds of miles away to Memphis, Tennessee, because that's where everything's blowing up in country music, and it would be great for my career. But he met you, um, he met Elvis. In fact, I, I recall a story where they apparently were all out at Graceland just goofing around one day and Hal saw this dirty car in, in a garage. And so he takes his finger and writes in the dust, wash me. It <laughs> turns out that it was Elvis's mother's car, which no one had touched since she had <laughs> passed away. And there Hal J had stuck his finger on it was right now. Hal, 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 I remember Hal so well. I mean, we were dear friends and still are to this day, although we don't talk or see each other that often. He was really a a huge personality in my life. Hal oh, was. mine too. Uh, and he he is is probably one of the best that's ever come along in radio next to Bill Mack. I mean, I loved Bill also. Mm -hmm. and he, but who Hal, also worked with my dad. Yeah. But I have great, great memories of Hal J. I mean, just an incredible guy. Well, we are really, really excited about this show. I know I'm looking forward to seeing you guys. And again, this is this is one of my favorite little places that's kind of steeped in, in history out here in Fort Bend County. It's been known by a handful of names. Scotty yeah. Saloon is what it's known by now, but it used to be known as the Miss Agnes Cafe or the Booth Trading right. Post. 
and family history for me, my father-in-law had his senior prom out there in 1957. That's Whoa. how long this place has been around, but it's a great indoor outdoor venue and um, you're going to have a lot of fun and everyone that goes to the show is going to be thoroughly entertained. Well, my band that I use is probably some of the greatest studio musicians in the world. They all come from Texas. It's the Texas Country Music Hall of Fame band. Oh, wow. It's a monstrous eight-piece band that's just incredible. And um, T. Graham will be with me on that show, and uh, my band will be backing up both of us. And, of course, I'm so excited for T. Graham because he's just the newest inductee or will be of the Grand oh, Old. He Office. was what grinning ear to ear telling me that story today. Let me tell you, and nobody deserves it more. I mean, here's a guy with a heart. I mean, one of the greatest hearts in our business. And that's why I love doing shows with him so much. With him and his wife, Sheila, they're just great people. He's so appreciative. He's paid his dues. He's one of the greatest singers ever. And to be able to do shows with him is a true honor. And I hope people will come out because it'll be nonstop two hours of number one hits. And I hope people will come and, and see him and myself and enjoy it. Well, super deal. Thank you very much. And uh, I promise I'll get you on the radio show real soon. And uh, and oh, 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 you might as well uh, talk about your, your 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 little side hustle as well on Sirius XM. You know, since I mentioned this to T. Graham Brown earlier, since I'm doing video interviews now, I'm not really constrained by program oh. directors telling me, you can't plug another radio show or another guy. How dare you do that? <laughs> I can do that all damn day. So, uh, well, I, I've been on Sirius XM for four years. I'm on hiatus right now for the next, uh, I guess, for the rest of this year, because I'm getting ready to start another project with my wife, Kelly, and it's going to take up two or three days a week. So I didn't wow. have time to do the radio show and then do our new podcast. So my wife, Kelly Lang, and I will be announcing that in the next month or two about what we're doing. And Ooh, be you heard it here on the Rowdy Zone first. Check that first. out. Sure did, man. But man, it's always good to visit with you. I mean, you're one of the best at, at radio. I mean, you're the best at what you do and you have mastered the art of conversation. It's never an interview with you. It's just always a great conversation and getting caught up. And I always enjoy visiting with you, Rowdy. Well, thank you very much. I appreciate that. And I will see you at Scotty's Saloon with T. Graham Brown on April the 13th. That's a Saturday night. Yes, you will. Good to see you, my friend. All right, thank you.